You ready? I'm fucking ready. This is Cosmographia, the Randall Carlson podcast. is Cosmographia, but it is also a Grimerica show, Brothers of the Serpent, and Uncharted X swap cast. Uh, we're all together here, uh, including with Laura, who's one of the Cosmographia team, and Brad, who, Brad, where are you? You're still in, you're in Utah? I'm in Sedona, Arizona. Okay, Arizona. Yeah, so we're all here to, actually, we're going to discuss the recent Scablands trip that we just took. It was uh, under the contact of the cabin uh, set of trips, so we were we were grouped up with Grimerica, and then Ben showed up as a, he was a low man on totem pole attendee, but he turned out to be really useful. So he took a lot of drone footage, so we decided, well, we should let him be on the show too. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> he, does have, he does have some experience with doing YouTube stuff, so I figured we should get him here. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Ben. <laughs> yeah, and also, happy, Brad. Yeah, happy birthday, Brad. You just had a birthday a couple days ago. I so. have completed another orbit of the old fireball, yes. All right. He's 21, dude. We can go to the bar, finally. All right. Woo. Started <laughs> early. Yeah, so it was a great trip, and uh, basically this is a this will be a recap of the whole thing, and we're going to show some of the footage and just talk about uh, talk about how it all went. Right, Randall? Is that your plan? Uh, yeah, I'm going along with the program Before here, him. whatever it might be, but that sounds like a good plan to me. So um, relive a little bit of the high times and the fun and the uh, – yeah, that we had. Um, Scabland extravaganza. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it was. Uh, uh, it was. It was really great to meet everybody. Uh, so everybody, everybody that was on the trip, if you're, if you guys are watching this, uh, I had a great time with all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Likewise. Uh, yeah. It was really cool. Yeah, an excellent group. And you know, every every time we've done one of these events, it's been like that. The groups are just fantastic. It's like the, it's like somehow it's self sorting. Only cool people show up. I don't know how it works out, but it has. So if you're not cool, don't fuck it up. That's right. <laughs> cool people only. Yeah. Only the hosts are allowed to not be cool, right? That's part of my job. Exactly. We fill up the non-cool category. Right. All the, the non-cool cover. Non-cool is good. Super nerd covers. <laughs> no, it was another, I mean... You go into every group, you're not sure what you're going to get, but, you know, by halfway through, you're loving them, and by the end of it, you're sad to see them go. I mean, every single event we've had, mm -hmm. it's no one's ever happy to leave. No one's ever, like, can't wait for on Sunday morning to get out of there. Everyone's mm -hmm. always, you know, hanging around or trying to kick it as long as they can. One more day. One yeah. more day. Yeah, I mean, that's what one the last day. two we've done. We've ended up adding one more day to each of them because, <clears throat> you know, it's it's never enough and it's no one ever wants to say goodbye. And that's why the tagline for contact at the cabin is you know, the magic continues because there seems to be some sort of something that we've been lucky enough to tap into there that, you know, I can't put my finger on it, but there just seems to be a uh, magic to these events that, you know, a few of the people sitting around this table, I mean, Graham, of course, can't make it tonight because he's with his mom for her surgery. So we send out good vibes to her and a speedy recovery. He will be at the event in September, of course. He's free of his day job now officially and uh, free to travel. And uh, we'll get him some fake papers if we need to. But, I mean, the point is it's a credit to, you know, him and, and Brad and uh, – Kyle and and Russ and Randall and Dave and Brandon and just sort of the people that are following you guys around and following our shows and you know it's a huge um sort of sign of that you know of 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 uh of all that collected community and effort so yeah I'm proud to be a part of that with you guys and I hope that continues in September um i'll kick that off before we even get into the recap here if everyone's like holy fuck i can't believe i missed that uh, we are doing this again september 20th to 26th of this year um it's already about 20 percent sold out but there's still you know 20 spots left or so so you can still get into that that is with the extra day on that as well so we will be 
checking in on uh, Monday this time and not leaving until Sunday. So the plan being that we'll be able to keep all the days a little bit shorter. So we have a little bit more time in the evenings, you know, an extra, an extra hour or two in the evenings and maybe an extra hour in the morning, a couple of mornings so that we can do more partying. Yeah. I'm up for that. Or, or get yes, more sleep. That- like same amount of partying, but more sleep. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll uh, actually be more partying no. in, in the same amount. Partying of sleep. was good. Yeah. <laughs> it was a light last night, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Sleep good up, thing you didn't bring two cases. It's time for wine. sleep. <laughs> if there would have been another case of snake wine, the party might have gone till dawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we finished it all in Utah, so. Yeah, I yeah, we bring... brought we brought two cases to Utah, and that was a four day trip, and it all got drank, all got finished. So, <laughs> but this time we were on a plane, so we couldn't bring that much. Uh, you know, we packed as much as we could into one suitcase, and we still actually, had to take a bottle yeah, out at the we got airport. To the airport they, they put it on the on the scale, and yeah, it was too heavy. Too so heavy. we're like, oh, geez, the, here, have a bottle of wine. Yeah. <laughs> chug, chug, <laughs> <chug. Yeah. laughs> but man, I I have to say, Brad and Randall. Uh, the Scablands were were absolutely amazing. It was really great to get there and to see it um, for myself. And uh, the itinerary was awesome. I know it was sort of you. Y'all were talking about how it's kind of there's so much to see, and um, that this was like a trial balloon sort of itinerary to see how much we could get done. And I was just amazed at the vastness of the of this. It's like you're trying to present, you know. Uh, something to, to, to a group of people that is so vast, you have to drive, you know, hours and hours every day and you still only, you're only seeing a, a tiny piece of it. So I thought, uh, that must've been quite a challenge to try to put that together and to figure out how it was all going to work. But, um, even though we didn't get to see some of the places we were supposed to like, like Wallula Gap, uh, personally, I just, uh, I thought it was amazing. It was a, it was a great, it was a great run and I'm sure it's only going to get better. Um, now that you guys know what it's, you know, what it's going to be like to drive three vans full of people and have to make stops for all the bathrooms and everything that we had to deal with, with all these people, it just, everything took more time, but still it was a, an awesome experience. So I think you guys, uh, yeah, hats off to you guys, yeah, man. That was great. A stellar job on that. And I think yeah. we both, yeah, really I mean, appreciate yeah. that guys. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. We, packed, we packed it in for sure. You had me worried, bro. You had me worried when it was like two weeks before and there was still no itinerary, but you fucking knocked it out of the park. Well, did, ditto, as an attendee, like I, I, I came along and you guys ran it. All of you did a fantastic job. I mean, Kyle and Russ, you were working on it too, like driving the buses and Darren and organized it. And uh, yeah, logistically, it, it went off really well. I mean, it was busy, long, I mean, long days, get a lot in, but that's kind of what you want in these events. You know, I think it's, there wasn't much time wasted and then outside of that it was it was the socializing and the, the group was was awesome yeah and I, as you said Kyle like just it really conveyed to me just a sense of scale and and I just didn't have a full appreciation for that and I'm, I still don't but yeah it was it was amazingly impressive I, I I walked out of there wondering why don't more people visit this area like that was one of the things like it just didn't you know, people go there to camp and there's, you know, some play some golf or whatever, but it doesn't, it, to me, it's as, spe- as spectacular as, as areas like the Grand Canyon. It should, it feels like it should attract a lot more people. So if anyone out there hasn't seen or been to the Channel Scable you should go. It's absolutely spectacular landscape. Uh, and then that gets doubly kind of, you know, uh, uh, it c- compounded in your head once you realize the scale of the event and the magnitude of what actually took place there and what you're looking at. So, yeah, yeah it was fantastic. Thanks, thanks for putting it on. Even in the conventional sense, I think that's what really hammers it home is like, this is one of those spots that even if you just want to go with the, the, the straight conventional theory, it's still like the ranger at the station is still like, this fucking thing was full of water. And you know, <laughs> the difference is we're saying, well, yeah, it was full of water and then some. But, you know, even the conventional theory of how this stuff was made is, is you know, phenomenal. It's It's impressive. And for me, it was like, I'd only ever seen the dry falls. I didn't find my hat, unfortunately. So yeah, we looked for it. We didn't see it. Yeah. That's okay. I got a new hat while I was there. So my hat collection grows. All right. Um, so I'd ever really, ever really only seen the dry falls, which is, and driven up that coolie a couple of times, which is impressive enough. And it's a beautiful drive, but man, the like the potholes 
Cataract and the um, and the other one were uh, what was the one we Rock went falls. the he uh, Falls Palouse Falls Palouse Falls he wasn't yeah. there that day yeah the uh, potholes um cool uh, potholes cataract potholes is the one we hiked up right. Yeah. Oh no no you're thinking of uh, steamboat steamboat, Rock. steamboat Rock. yeah that, that was the, uh, the steamboat was last yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, and we do have a lot of – Kyle's got a bunch of pictures queued up over here, and I've got some drone footage, and Ben's got some drone I footage do. too, so we can go over that as well. Oh, so yeah, we should have some of that playing while we're bullshit. Well, and as, and as yeah, spectacular as it is right there, that's that's the most obvious place where these floods occurred, but, you know, we could follow them around the whole uh, perimeter of the ice sheet, you know, all across uh, the northern United States. There, There's really impressive flood features. Um, so as, as, as awesome as the scale was, that's a small chunk of it. Yeah. So this is to what you were saying, Darren. I mean, I took a picture of this sign because it's like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, even the parks are, this admitting. is the park saying, you know, but of course you read it and, 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 you know, of course they have the ice stand theory in here, um, which, you know, it's to be expected, but, um, yeah, it's, I mean, right here, cataclysmic floods on the plaque at the park. So it's not, that's not in question for sure. Yeah. This is, was that dry fall at dry that, falls? That was Palouse Falls. Oh, that Palouse Falls. Okay. Yeah. So Palouse Falls had the same, is Palouse Falls where you guys went cliff diving? No, that's no. in the Drumheller channels. Drumheller oh, channels, yeah. That was like a, what was it called? Blue, uh, what was that? Upper Goose Lake. Oh, Upper Goose uh, Lake, yeah, Laura. Yeah. I, I remember because there's a video. Well, I do. Yeah. We had a good dozen people that jumped off that cliff, uh, starting with Kyle turning around backwards and backflipping to show off for everybody. It was like, oh, <laughs> we're all just bums back after that, bum. man. That was yeah. awesome. <laughs> there is video. Video coming. Yes, I have I have all the I, – I do have all the drone footage of a bunch of people jumping off. I, I did upload a little, a little clip recently that had some of it. Yeah, you guys could put on quite a show. Oh, that's nothing compared to diving. Jamming. The jamming's the best part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was a highlight for me too, yeah. for sure. Yeah, Ben put up like a what is it, eleven minute video with a bunch of his drone footage, uh, some footage of Randall. It was yeah, really clips cool. of Randall. The map, you guys were all surrounding that big map that you carried around, and Randall was like showing people what was happening, and everybody was surrounding the map, looking down at it. And then after that, it's like he starts playing, uh, uh audio of us jamming out late night oh man that's... while while drone footage is playing of all the various places we visited it was really yeah. well done Where... oh, yeah, i didn't really i didn't good. get that far i gotta watch yeah. the rest of it yeah you get, it's yeah. really good yeah thank that's... you for doing that ben yeah it's not yeah. that's killer not, nothing like looking at uh palouse falls and people jumping off a cliff to like a cover of no diggity in there <laughs> <laughs> is that on your channel or what? Yeah, 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 yeah yeah i just up i just put it up i think yesterday but Something different for me, like a bit of fun to put it up, and yeah, it was really cool. Together. And if you stay tuned right into the end, there's a little bonus clip right at the end where that's right. Ra Ra Randall unfurls his his trance drummer self. Trance drumming, yeah. that's right. Oh, really, right. really well done. Good. Darth in, the, Darth in the chat says that the sleep to party ratio never changes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> never changes. That's right. And then Cyrus says that the snake bros killed it. All right. Well, hey, thank you, thank buddy. You. Yeah. Thank you. So, Randall, what was your? Uh, I'm 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 eager to hear what you thought of it. Um, you know, we were excited to get out there in the Scablands, and I knew you you and Brad were excited to get a group out there, and we were finally able to pull it off. And I'm just wondering, uh, a week later, how was it? What would you do differently? And um, you know, how is it settling? Well, the only thing, yeah. Doing differently, I think you guys have already, we all came to the same conclusion on that. A little bit shorter days and having that extra day, I think that'll make a difference. Because one of the things that'll do then is, you know, allow us to get back, have dinner, like you said, socialize, party or whatever. But if there is something that comes up uh, impromptu that we want to see, then we might have a little extra time like, oh man, we should go see such and such a place that would have a, you know, that's maybe off the, the path a little bit of the itinerary. So that would give us that option as well. If we didn't have quite as many 
places uh it wouldn't stop us in other words from from adding a site or two yeah like an extra day would allow us to get all the way to Wallula gap perhaps on one day yes and that was a disappointment to me not getting to Wallula gap because okay. um oh. of course you know really uh you know how would you do this if you were going to try to tell the whole story you you, you obviously couldn't do it I mean, even two weeks wouldn't be enough. I mean, two weeks, we've done two weeks. Two weeks, let's say you start at Portland and you go up the, the, the Columbia River, go east through the Columbia Gorge there. Well, all the way along there are spectacular, gigantic flood effects, particularly the, the, um, the, the magnificent waterfalls, uh, uh, La Tourelle, Oneonta, Multnomah, these are some really spectacular things to see and to realize that they are also products of these tremendous erosive floods that came through there. Um, and then, you know, getting up to Wallula Gap and, uh, you know, we had to, you know, we didn't get as far as Lake Pond Array, but, you know, that whole area up there, Coeur d'Alene, Pond d'Alene, Pond d'Alene, Pond d'Alene is worth seeing. Taking the trip up the Clark Fork Valley where the supposed ice dam was, and, uh, you know, going through um, um, Eddy Narrows um, into the basins of Lake Missoula to the giant current ripple swar uh, fields up there. There's a lot to see. Um, so that could actually comprise a whole another trip in itself, a, a week-long journey into what we might think of as, as the lake basin. What would have been to the east of the Purcell Trench lobe, and I think to those who've been keeping up with the Cosmographia podcast, you're going to know what I'm talking about when I say the Purcell Trench lobe, but <clears throat> we would then have to also uh, go into Canada, go up through uh, the Rocky Mountain Trench, uh, Okanagan Valley, um, up in the headwaters of the Columbia, all of that up in there. Uh, um, the Drumlin Fields up there um, on the Nishako Plateau. So, I mean, all of that is part of the same event. That's the thing. And, and again, what we saw in those five days, like you said, is only a, a piece of it. I got some footage with my drone of the Bow River the other day. Oh, and you I, did? Yeah, and I've been meaning to ask you about that. It was that because that shit is like flat as a pancake on top. And then you've got the, you know, the typical river. It's an, it's a decent sized river, but it's at the size, at the bottom of a channel that's, you know, clearly way too big for it. And then yep. when you get it with the drone, you can really start to see all the coolies and the, I mean, we call them coolies. Mm -hmm. uh, they're nothing compared to the dry coolies that we've seen out there. But um, so was that, is that because that's a subglacial flow? Uh, why be the flatness like the flat on top and then the the fingers coming into it well the flat is probably because it's an outwash plain i mean where the bow river discharges on the rocky mountain front you would have had a major spreading out and slowing down of the uh of the movement of the water which would then you know create a uh a uh an outwash plain and an outwash plain can be pretty flat. Um, let's see the bow river. Yeah. It comes out there just, uh, pretty much what to the Northwest of Calgary. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's check this out here. Uh, I wonder if Google earth would show any drumlin fields on it. Well, it looks to me like where it, where it discharges, or to use the French term, debouches from the the mountain front, it spreads out into a huge outwash plain. Um, let's see, some of the town, Exshaw, let's see, Trans-Canada Highway comes through there. So you've got a constriction there, um, right there, let's Cochran, see, between. Cochrane, there's something right there at Cochrane, too. Cochrane, yeah. And something dam right there also okay and then going further west you've got the bow flats natural area so oh yeah so so what you got there looks to me like a classic underfit river and the larger valley the whole floor looks like it's just mantled with sediment 
and that's would be totally um, understandable given that you first had a lot of glaciers grinding up and excavating uh, material uh, from the mountain flanks, and then with the meltdown, all of that material was washed down into the into the valleys and deposited. Mount Rundle. Okay, here we go. Yeah, oh, wow, look at this. Yeah, we had so much drone coverage. We had three different people with drones going. I didn't even pull mine out, and then uh, drone envy occurred. So I'm I'm about <laughs> to go get one of those small ones tomorrow, and uh, Darren already bought one, and he's been out with it. So uh, it was, that it was, was a lot of fun having all that coverage. Pretty heavy drone envy out there. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. some drone activity, that's for sure. I bought one on the way home. <laughs> I stopped at Spokane and bought one on the way home just because it was so cool. I'm well, I got flag excited like, to get that mini tomorrow. And that's lo- what yeah, I said. I, 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 I got a hold of Brad and said, if you guys need me to go get some aerial footage, anything in Canada, well, we've got this fascist regime. Uh, <laughs> I can, you know, take care of that because you need papers to get into my country pretty soon. The papers. Ooh, please. The papers, please. <laughs> yeah. uh, am I, uh, can I share a screen? Absolutely, yeah. sir. Mount Rundle? Okay. Give it a shot. It's going to say that. Great example of an overthrust mountain that is these oh, were man. once yeah this is mount rundle so this is along the bow river right here so you've got enormous amounts of glacial erosion in here on the left and you can see the whole strata has been completely uplifted you can see this was once horizontal strata yep and you're you know the question is in my mind is at what rate do these uplift events occur is it possible that they occur a whole lot faster than the conventional models have assumed Um, because one of the things is like when you look at this you particularly notice the the sharp angular uh, cliff faces here Um, you you know if this had been see here's the the problem is is given erosional rates um, that's which are based upon measuring the amount of sediment that's being discharged into the oceans every year, say that's being washed off the continents. Typically 10 to 12 million years is all it would take to wear a continent down to a so-called peneplain, where it's basically just a flat surface, not too far above sea level. So when you think about the rates at which erosion takes place, even under normal circumstances, much less, the accelerated, the exponentially accelerated erosional rates of these transition periods between different climatic phase states, such as full glacial and interglacial modes, when you have that accelerated erosion, what that would tell you then to me is that, you know, really, why should there be mountains at all? At this point, you know, the mountains should be worn being wore down as fast as they're being uplifted if the rates of uplift are derivative from the rates of continental drift that's being measured for example along uh the mid-atlantic ridge for for example if you've got if you've got the spreading of of continents that's say two centimeters per year then you would assume that the uplifting and this could be overthrust like what we're seeing here or it could be um It could be anticlinal, like we saw in Washington. It could be synclinal, or it could be monoclinal, right? Any one of those. Um, So the question is, is at what rate does that take place? And And if it's taking place at the assumed rates of a few centimeters of erosion per year, well, then why do they even exist? See my point? In other words, the uplift is very slow. The erosional downcutting and wasting relative to the rates of uplift is not, not you know, it, it's commensurate with that. So my point is, is that these things should be almost eroding away as fast as they're being uplifted. Unless the rates of uplift, folding and faulting and overthrusting are accelerated for a short period of time above the rates of down wasting, if that makes sense, what I'm trying to say here. Does that make sense, Russ, what I'm trying to say? I think so. 
I think so. Yeah. But I, I gotta get. I'm trying to get this picture over because the spot I'm looking at is definitely uh, it's over further where it's into the prairies. Sure. Okay. okay. So, so is that Randall? Is that along the uh, the uh, ice fields Parkway? Oh, uh, we're switching. That's fine. Oh. Yeah, and full full disclosure here, I'm trying to set up drone footage as well, so I wasn't totally paying attention, Randall, so you probably made a lot more sense than I was able to tell. But <laughs> okay. you weren't listening, but it made sense. Yeah, it made a lot of sense. <laughs> I didn't hear anything you said. Well, there's, so. Yeah, those mountains shouldn't be there. It should have been worn down. If it took that long to lift them up, they should have been worn down again by now. That's, that's yeah, it's, That was my point. Yeah, and it sounds so, similar to the about how I've heard you describe things like water gaps, right, where you, you have uplift and – and 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 wearing down, uh, happening at the same time, or at least at at the same rate. At least that's how they say right. some of these features are formed. Yeah. So where where's your picture taken, Darren? At McKinnon Flats, which would be directly south of Langdon, Alberta. Oh, okay. So the so the the Bow River comes through pretty much west to east, and then it cuts south, goes through Calgary, right, and then out continues out into the plain so we're i just sent you two uh pictures kyle that uh, i think will kind of get the gist of what i'm talking about across well, i know we're going live but uh yeah in the in the cosmographia version i'll put those in okay okay yeah i got langdon so yeah i'm gonna guess that all of that is is outwash in there for one thing you had the the uh these the floods coming down through there because this Right there would have been pretty much where the ice-free corridor was for a while, probably in that two to 3,000-year period just leading up to the Younger Dryas boundary. Because if you guys remember, there was a, a, a warming that began between fourteen and 15,000 years ago that caused a glacier recession so that when the Younger Dryas boundary occurred, the the uh, the ice sheets had lost maybe ten percent of their mass as a result of this gradual warming between thirteen thousand and fifteen thousand years ago. Okay, with that shrinkage of the ice back, that's probably when the ice free corridor opened up. Now, you then had major flooding that poured down into that region between the Laurentide ice sheet on the east and the Cordilleran ice sheet on the west. So when the when the meltdown occurred, you had huge volumes of water pouring into that trough between the two ice sheets. And so this area that you're looking at by Langdon would have been right there in that trough. In fact, the whole town of Calgary would have been. And then the Bow River coming out of there would have had a, a tremendous amount of uh, outwash, and that was probably one of the major discharge points for melting floodwaters to um, to exit off the Rocky Mountains. So, in this instance, it actually would have been actually there was just that much water coming down that waterway at one time. Okay, let me see. Okay, where now? This is the Bow River. Okay, and so. So that would be looking north. That would be looking towards. Uh, that would be looking west towards. Yeah, the Rocky. this is looking west because you see the Rocky Mountains in the distance there. Yeah, so it's likely, um, Darren, that from the flat surface all the way down to the existing river is just a gigantic mass of outwash sediment. You know, 150 uh, feet thick or whatever. That's amazing. So it's on top of the landscape. It's like it's buried. It's, whatever it's, there, whatever is, there, is there, yeah, is buried. So there could, you know, be shit under there even. Wow. I didn't think of it that way. I thought of it. So in my head, I pictured it as being like a glacier across there and a sub glacial flow underneath, but that's all sediment. Yeah. Wow. But, and it's actually saying when it was an ice free corridor, there just would have been, it would have been subject to just tons of flooding and sediment at that yes, time. I imagine yes. that's the case. So it would yeah. have been real difficult to traverse because that was a, it would have been a long journey as well i can kind of see that now from that it looks like it's all dumping in from the north side mm -hmm. and sort of slamming into the other side and and coming down how Perfect. wide was that was that corridor i mean during those couple thousand years what's the do we have an estimation for that width of the ice free corridor yeah yeah we 
I remember yeah, like um, a 50 mile in there somewhere, but that, yeah, it was, it was growing, about right. expanding and closing up and separating. Yeah, right. Been a hell of a gauntlet with all of the megafauna and short face, <laughs> short, yeah, exactly. short face bears running around through there for the, yeah, it's like a, you know, if it's paleo like, Indian roving bands of closing humans. in on you and all the bears and giant cats and everything are in there too. Yep, yep. Not nice right. funnel, prey funnel. <laughs> that, well, I'm going to share so, a screen. Yeah, let's see some scablands drone. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, um, I've got a little. Uh, slideshow of some photos as well and russ has some excellent drone footage yeah well what i'll do we'll, we'll, yeah I'll, we'll come right back to the since we're talking about this I, want, I have a map up here i just want to show one thing on this map yeah, right. and uh bow river yeah let's see are we sharing my I share not yet my, Hit it. Okay, i didn't think so okay so uh get this out of the way come on here darren doesn't know to not ask uh Non sequitur question. questions, I guess. <laughs> Tangentially speaking. Um, yeah. ooh, well, this is like my stomping ground, Laura. So I got my drone and I want to go see. Oh, some. yeah. It's all related. So here's Langdon Park, and here you see the incised Bow River flowing along. You can see how the flat, how it's, it's cut down into this flat surface. So you were. Your drone footage is right around over this area somewhere. That's correct, yeah. Yeah. So all of this, yeah, all of this is outwash in here. And it was I'm sure it was from multiple sources, but one of the main contributing sources would have been here's where the river comes out of the Rocky Mountain front right here. Um, and that so would have been the same outwash that brought the big rock down? Uh, no, the big rock was brought down. It came from the Athabasca where the Athabasca River. So it would have been farther north. Let's see, up by Jasper. Yeah, so here, if I'm going to zoom up here, you see Mount Robson right here? Yeah. Uh, that was likely one of the sources for the Metacortsite boulders. The other one was Mount Edith Cavell. Uh, little but south. both of those two mountains... Yeah, suit right in here, but that's not too important for the moment. But you can see this was a pathway for discharge, and look at this. See, this is incipient drumlinization here. So this is most likely carved by uh, tremendous volumes of water passing under the valley glaciers that, that occupied these valleys here. Because bear in mind that during the latter part of the Ice Age, the Cordillera and Ice Sheet buried almost all of this, and all you had was nunataks or mountain peaks sticking up above the glaciers. So you had a tremendous amount of ice here. Here, here's Mount Edith Caval right here. So when we come out here, here's the outlet right here. So right here at Hinton, you would have had the water discharging. You can actually look at the texture of the land here. The water came out this way and then diverted south and came down along this pathway, scouring as it went, and then the, um, the boulders got deposited all along here, all the way down to Montana, right here. And I think we can see, if we zoom in, we can actually see there's some, like, scab land type terrain in here and then if we really zoom in right here can you guys see the giant current ripples yep wow so, yeah there's huge current ripple field right in here and then all of this is leading into what becomes the missouri river so the missouri river coming down here became a, a you know a giant sluice way that was taking that discharge of a lot of the, that meltwater coming off of the, the uh, Rocky Mountains there and carrying it down. You see, this is the, the Milk River here. And if you look, you can see that it's, if I go back to the, here you can see it's a, it's a case of an underfit river again. And then that goes down and feeds into the Missouri River. And so that became a, a, a sluice way to convey waters from the melting ice sheet up here 
all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And then if we go back up here to this those, area. Those Milk River mip, ripples are way larger than anything that we saw on our trip in Crab Creek Coulee or on West Bar. Yes. Yeah, they would totally dwarf those things that we saw. Yes. Those would be like hills you'd be driving over if I'm in my truck. Yeah. And they'd be so, and so huge you probably wouldn't even be aware. Wow. Like, okay. So if we go back up here to, to Jasper National Park, there's Mount Robson. So you had a discharge out the Athabasca here. But then what I want to call your attention to is the Rocky Mountain Trench, which is really a very interesting geomorphological feature and you can see look look at the texture of the floor and how it's it's got this drumlinized effect and then of course here's the head highway 40 uh 95. No, that's 95 and this is the headwaters of the columbia river so if we go up here you'll notice that the rocky mountain trench really begins up here by here's Prince George. It begins by Prince George. And you can see it's like a great trough all the way cut all the way down here. Thousands of feet deep. Yes. And coming down here like this, you can see it. And of course, all of this was completely filled with ice during the late Wisconsin ice age. And if we come all the way down, you see that it discharges right here where Flathead Lake is. And this here is one of the, this is the Mission Basin, which was the largest basin of Lake Missoula. And if you zoom in, and look at this, look at these drumlins. So I look at this and I go, yep, what this is suggesting is that you had extreme subglacial flows coming down there would have been a valley glacier through here that was probably three quarters of a mile thick, right? So now you can picture you've got huge discharges coming underneath the ice and discharging. Now, the, the, the uh, terminus of the ice sheet is right here. You can see the moraine shows up in this map, the Polson moraine. And the current Flathead River is breaches that moraine. And it flows across thick sedimentary fields of of huge thick hundreds of foot thick layers of outwashed sediment um, and it's right here camas prairie where the camas prairie basin where you have the giant current ripple field and i will bet if i go over here we will be able to see the current ripples there they are And this is in, in when we do the, uh, the the eastern wing of the Great Cordier and Floods trip, we'll do this. We'll come down 382, and we come through Marco Pass right here. We we curve to the east, and just as we're coming through the pass, you're up on the ridge here, and you can look down all the way to the south of Camas Prairie, and you can see the whole ripple train spread out for five miles beneath you it's a pretty spectacular perspective especially when you get there towards the end of the day when the sun is getting low in the sky yeah get the shadows right yeah we're hoping to add that part to in uh in 2022 of course but we are going back in september 20th 26th if anyone wants to get on that trip Mm -hmm. uh why don't you show us why next kyle why we should be uh stoked to go to soap lake yeah kyle's got a bunch of photos of okay well just for context i'll pull us over Whoa. to the soap lake and we'll zoom in and we'll see this is where we stayed right here at the uh at the resort there at the bottom end of soap lake and since we've been talking about discharge and outwash fans we have a huge one just to the south of soap lake that we actually did drive across and saw a, a small piece of it you know yeah. the uh, the afrata erratic fan and we were sitting right here at the south end of of Grand Coulee. So north of Quincy Basin, right? North, yes, this is Quincy Basin right here. Where's Steamboat uh, Rock in comparison to that? Steamboat Rock up north. is right there. 
Yeah. North part of Upper Grand Coulee. I climbed to the top of that bitch and all around it. <laughs> well, Darren, there's no question that you are an impressive fellow. Thank you very much, sir. I can die. He fell off, climbed back up, and then climbed down act like it didn't happen. Shook it up. It was we, up all both ways. That's what he told me. And we Shook also made down. this stop right here at the at the gravel pit. Let's see, where's the gravel pit? Uh, Northrop Road. Um, it's right at the entrance of Northrop Road there, yeah? Yeah, it's right at the entrance here. Yeah, we got some spectacular pictures of that. That's um, that flood, the floodborne sediment. I got that. Yeah. It's really nice. Really, the, the drone footage of like panning close to that and just across it is a really good, uh, really good footage. Yeah, yeah, we need to see that too. I believe this is it right here. Yep, you can see it there. Yep. Yeah, we and that granite it. in there, uh, th- th- there was a c- couple of questions we had about this. Chunks of granite in there, is that, was that dumped in there as part of quarrying, or you think that's no, sediment? I, that's that's been, probably in flood within sediment. the sediment. So it, wow. it shows that there was a lot of different flows of water coming together here. Some good pink granite. Yeah, that flowed over a ver- some very diverse terrains. And we have a nice, a look here, we, we have a nice little cataract here, a little alcove. And we have another little incipient steamboat rock forming right here. Let's go to this map. Oh yeah, look at this. Yeah. So if you had, if the erosion had kept up, then this is called Castle Rock. Castle Rock would have been an isolated butte, just like Steamboat Rock is now. And it looks so the, small on the map compared to when you're there. Oh yeah, to the mean, top. I yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> well, I can, true. I can. I've got drawn footage from on top of steamboat rock i flew the, the drone around from on top it's yeah it's incredible well, I, landscape when we were climbing down there was deer climbing up that shit there was a family of deer teaching a little baby deer how to climb up the rocks huh. yep i saw a deer too when i was on my way down you were impressive buddy you were like up and down in like 45 minutes yeah, it was fast. <laughs> I didn't get to do a lot of sightseeing up there, though. Just get to make it to the highest peak and turn around. Most of the people weren't even up there yet, and you were already back to the van. I left a trail of clothes all the way up. <laughs> I we, saw that. we noticed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we did see that. You just, your underwear was unnecessary, though. You didn't have to take those off. <laughs> Could have kept those off. That was a flank. That was a flank. <laughs> all right, let's see some pics. I, I, so I didn't get... Uh, very much pictures of of Soap Lake. I've got one, just like which was right outside my uh, my door in my cabin. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at where we stayed, our base of operations. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I didn't. Yeah, we just took a picture of the beach. We're like, this, this is yeah. this <laughs> is just like right this outside. Is, yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah. man, this is what I wake up to. I have, in the morning. I have Brad on the paddle bike in the uh, lake, but that's about it. Yeah, that was probably the most exciting part of the whole trip, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We're out on the paddle boat. <laughs> but I mean, I can go. I just made this little, this is just kind of. Yeah, yeah. let's play the slideshow. Yeah. Yeah, let's just go through the slideshow. My phone comments. made its own slideshow and it added epic. <laughs> Lots of it's like scar. turned into a commercial for fucking Scablands. I just had to like post it, and away you go. <laughs> All right, this is by the Spokane River, right? At the Bowl and Pitcher? That's right, the Bowl yeah, and Pitcher. Like and uh, yeah, I was just amazed by this. This the, the river was just so beautiful, and I don't know. I'm, I know, it was. Uh, Hit that full screen. So yeah, I was taking some other pictures of just, I, I just love this, these, these, this is all the, the the rocks that the river is polishing here, and you can, I don't know. You know, I'm a rock hound, so I was looking at that like, God. Well, see, the interesting thing is there's a whole story there because now you know that, okay, whatever type of rock there was once part of some diverse bedrock yep. extending over some pretty wide geographic area. So what this does is tells you where the water and or the ice what terrains, you know, what areas, geographic regions to traverse. Yeah. Yep. And it was, I mean, it was just, just absolutely beautiful. Uh, so this is, I suppose this is the bowl and pitcher, but we were trying to figure out, well, what's what? I, I was thinking that this is maybe the pitcher here. That's what I would think. That would be my first guess anyway. 
this is the the bowl sitting over. I don't, I don't know. Well, within within that uh, large large uh, piece to the left, there there is a very smoothed out rounded section. So that could okay. could be what they're considering the bowl. And, I hadn't figured okay, it out I, other than that. I do see people on top of that too. So there's a bit of scale. Yep. There are some people standing right on top in the middle. Of that there. Yeah, yep. Yeah, there yep. You go. Yeah, and we climbed Not up to see it. Cool. Yeah, we were up there. Yeah, I yeah, retrieved so. my drone. It's like an this epic is... joint smoking location. <laughs> this is uh, what the river looks like during the snow melt, right? I mean, oh. the snow's still melting. We got the yeah, rivers it's up, rapid. Yeah, loud and flowing, fast. It was really, really cool. Yeah, really cool suspension bridge there too. Yeah, there it is. Yep. So there we go. Yeah, this is uh, t- a top Stepto Butte. Oh yes, and uh, I just couldn't get enough pictures of this. This I mean, looking out in every direction, it was just uh, how high, how how much higher are you on Stepto Butte than this landscape below? It's it's right at a thousand feet. I think it's yeah, just a little bit more than a thousand, something like that. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, yeah, I took a lot of pictures of this. Yeah, it was really beautiful. People were, people on the trip were joking that it was like driving through the it's, like the Windows, Windows XP <laughs> login yeah. screen. Yeah, XP. It legitimately <laughs> is like when you're down driving next to those green rolling hills, it looks just like it, like with the yeah. blue skies and the clouds. Yeah, yeah, this was a beautiful area, and this this is all these. Yeah, it just went areas. forever. Yeah, yeah, it's like what th- what what did, what did we learn? Is three thousand square miles of these hills. Pause for a minute. I'll jump to the map, and we'll see where that is, and then so was, we'll jump back to the pictures. Okay, just, so the Stepto Butte right here. Okay. Okay, so this is all the rolling Palouse, all of this area around here, um, which is the Luss, the Luss soil, yes. and if we, this is a section of the Luss topsoil that actually was not washed away by the floods coming from the north. If we go to the um, to the uh, aerial photo, the satellite view, we'll see the Cheney Palouse coming down uh, here, and then Stepto is right here. So we're looking out over this here that was undoubtedly submerged for a short period of time. But the the water was not the flowing water was not moving fast enough or was not sustained long enough to wash it away. But it undoubtedly created that kind of that gently undulating stormy sea topography that was so impressive. Yeah. But if we go here to the west, then we'll see the very it's distinct by... difference where we get to the to the Scabland complex where That's we've got now exposed basalt bedrock. Yeah, that's quite clear with the colors, isn't it? That that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And you can see the stream the streamline shaping here. Well, and go go north to Sprague Lake where we started. That's that's right at the top of that Cheney Palouse. Yeah. That's a hell of a big floodplain. Oh man. Oh yeah, look yeah, you can see how wide it is. So that would have been a river that's maybe four hundred feet deep. By let's see, two, four. That's about ten miles wide, right there. That's just, yep. <laughs> yeah, insane. Then you got the drone footage from up there. We can show. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Past pictures. Drone from, footage from the top from, of Stepto. From Stepto. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got a yeah, great so. one where he he flies past the whole group and we're all waving at the drone and then it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll try. It, 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 it might get a couple frames per second, but we can pause too. So. So so no, this is not. Um, we're part of Quincy Basin. Just no, to, yeah. Just to let it to, okay. So here's Stepto Butte, and here's yep. over here is Quincy Basin. Quincy Basin, which so, would have filled up and been had much more water. Is I guess that's at a lower elevation than 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 to the east, and then. But at one point, this was all covered in water for a, a time, I, and it I all think, dri- it, Yeah, I think and, there was probably a time when the entire basalt plateau was almost <laughs> submerged completely, um, um, but then the water channelized like we talked about multiple times and once it gets focused into a channel it can become more erosive and then and then that increased erosion 
down cuts the channel. So then what happens is the channel will capture the overland flow that had been spread out more as a sheet. And now it's focused into a channel. And that's yep. really when it really can begin incising into the bedrock and end up creating, you know, Grand Coulee and Moses Coulee, things like that. Right. And then all funneling down south to Wallula Gap. To Wallula Gap, the place we didn't yep. get, which is right here. Yeah, Rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> Brad made us stop and turn around next time. <laughs> All right, let's In, see. If dinner I, at midnight. I, I said no. Yeah. Let's have a look. So see. Why do you Go think ahead. Steptoe Butte is the only um, thing left over there? Is that that would have just been the only uh, tall mountain in that area? Yeah, it's a volcanic. Well, it's, it's some kind when of. We're uh, through go ahead, sorry. Looking at this, we, I can show you. It, it's actually part of the mountain range to the west, to the east. Sorry. Okay. It's a remnant. Yeah, it's kind of a... But yeah, here we are, a thousand... Yeah, look at this. Yeah, it's a little, little skippy, but it's still good. Yeah. And yeah. the drive Pretty up close. on top of this thing... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I think yeah, you, yeah, you can you, see the you, road to the right here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you can oh, see the road right, right here. Here's somebody about around, to walk down the road. I think you go around it four times to get up there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it gets narrower and narrower and steeper and steeper. And everybody in the van is just like, <laughs> Grip. And oh, it, yeah, it was deceptively that. tall. It lo did not look that tall from the street, from ground level. And then it was like, it felt like we were there halfway up and then kept going up and up and up. And the green just like added so plane. much color to be there in the spring this time yeah, instead of the, yeah. the dark brown late summer when we're usually there. It was really spectacular. Yeah, so that's another thing. We're we're um, we're moving the the trip to September, right? The next one. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a totally different look. I mean, yes. this was enchanting uh, everywhere we went. It was just uh, it was beautiful. Yep, different colors, less less water over the waterfalls, less waters in the lake. Yeah, yeah. So why do you it's, why it's do desert you desert out there? Why do you Farmer, pick for though? September then? What's that? <laughs> why do you do well? It's just always in September. The reason that it's in September is because we'll be in in Utah in May. Gotcha. Starts cooling down also, you know. You get, otherwise, yeah. it is dang hot there through the middle of the summer. So it's either spring or spring. Yeah, it's, you know, it's like you said, it's different in the fall. You would get, you know, your sepia tones, your, you know, burnt umbers, your siennas. Man, I'm sure nice, that that's ben. what you exactly what you were thinking, Ben. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's still beautiful and spectacular in its own way, just different. It gets that golden look in the fall too because there's yeah. so much wheat everywhere. It's like golden fields everywhere. Oh, that's well, cool. and even yeah. even a rich dark brown, you know, just this mocha dark brown instead. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. still another mm -hmm. patchwork that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So in addition to your siennas, ah. your burnt umbers, your sepias, you also get the mochas. <laughs> Have you been watching Bob Ross? Oh, great <laughs> <laughs> uh, Those awesome, are cool man. shots at the top there. There's a Bob yeah. Ross marathon on the other day. I just... <laughs> you know, in the Randall, building business. Randall you know. just binged Bob Ross <laughs> since he got back from the trip. Well, you know, in my business of, of building things for people, you know, typically at the end you – you paint things and people have to pick out colors, you know? So you've got all of these, you know, these very highfalutin type names, you know, <laughs> dark chocolates, you know, your, you know, whatever. Whereas back when I started in this business, it was basically, you know, like brown, brown. and gray, you know, <laughs> red, light green, yeah. eggshell. <laughs> Yeah, you might have had you might have had light well, green. Those names don't provide enough job security. Dark green. 
<laughs> a lot green doctrine. Egg shell was the start of the egg. I think that was right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they have to keep one upping themselves. It's an it's like, endless. Do you want the fun. bone, the white, the off white, the ivory, or the beige? <laughs> <laughs> My chickens like brown eggs. Well, you understand that there are people whose job it is to sit around to do nothing but think up these names. Yeah. And they, they get paid a lot of money for that. I'd take that job. I think I'd be good at that. I'd just Old be like, flower blue. Yeah. it tastes like fluish. Yeah. <laughs> Titanium right. white. Yeah. Look at that. yeah. So let's see what we're looking at here. Right? That's we're like looking at... Is the, uh, That's the... one of the potholes, isn't the it? Potholes, yeah. Oh, yeah, potholes, of course. Yeah, this is the spillway, right? Uh, Colk. That's the Colk down the... there below the lake. Brad in the pothole? Yeah, the Colt right there. Yeah, look at that. Is that Brad in the spillway for scale? Uh, is he in there? Kyle climbed even... up the hill opposite the road to get that picture, right? It's the either other... that, yeah, it's either Colking or, or maybe maybe it was the Army was testing uh, oh, right. around nuclear Ordnance. tests there. Uh... <laughs> so we, so uh, Darren brought Randall a, uh, a megaphone, and what was really cool is Randall's, Randall's over here, He's talking to the group, and some of the people are walking down in the canyon. I'm standing up on, uh, up against this basalt cliff wall, and I can hear everything he's saying about the Colk right there from up here. It was it was pretty cool. I got a little yeah, bit Yeah, once of he got the megaphone, we could kind of spread out and still hear him. Uh, has, yeah. you know, ears will perk up when he starts hearing Colk, though. <laughs> 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 this is Devil's Canyon, right? This is this is spectacular. Yeah. This is one of my this favorite drive. spots, actually. Wasn't this amazing? Yeah, and then really see, was. and then when you think about Devil's Canyon, you know, here it is. It's it's again. You have to think about it in the context of the Cheney Palouse and how it diverted. It completely overwhelmed the pre-flood topography. I mean, the amount of water was so intense and so great that. Whatever was there in terms of pre-flood, uh, you know, stream channels and topography, that was just completely ignored. It just completely overwhelmed this and and then breached the divide between the Palouse River and the uh, and the Snake. And at that point, let me just jump to the map real quick, and then we'll come back to your photos. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. All right. Well, since that's showing Walula Gap, I will, in my defense, say that we drove up there the day after, and it's now privately owned and growing crops. And the the overlook point that we took Graham to is not accessible. Oh man, that is disappointing. Wow. The, well, was then it was there was electric fence crossing the road to get up there, and uh, so there is a trailhead, but it is it's a pretty good hike. Okay, take a quick look. Cheney Palouse is all coming down here from the north, and here is the Snake River, and the Palouse River comes down this way, and you can see very clearly on the map that its old, that its original channel came here to the west and then flowed down here somewhere and met the, um, the Columbia. And, of course, that meeting place, that confluence, is now completely buried under sediment. So it's difficult to say exactly where it would have been. Um, but what happened was you had two different rivers. This was the watershed divide right here. When the water came down, it was too much water to be channeled to the west down the the uh, Palouse River Channel, which is now called Washtukna Coulee. And even though Washtukna Coulee could convey something like 100 million cubic feet per second, um, it still just spilled over the divide, cutting two, uh, making two incisions. One here is the Palouse River. There's another one that started here that we I've never really we've never gone to this one, but it didn't. You'll see it didn't cut all the way through. But what that shows you is that the water was pouring over here, and if the flood had continued, this this incision here would have eaten its way back up and eventually breached up here just like devil's canyon now does but because devil's canyon is now not receiving palouse uh river because see palouse palouse river got 
captured because this new channel was cut by the floodwaters and it was deeper than the, the, the original valley had a huge sediment dump in it. So then basically with that sediment and this down cutting here, it was natural that the Palouse River got diverted right here. This is where the capture took place. In fact, at one point, the water would have been flowing around this sort of almost mesa-like uh, protuberance here. Where are the waterfalls, uh, since we'll be going there next? The waterfalls are right in here at Palouse Falls State Park. Let's see. Uh, they don't really sort show up here. That, I sort of that, make the cataract there, right, there but here we go. You can see them. Yeah, you can see, yeah. see them right here. He's, and here, here's the whole cataract alcove right here, this huge bowl. And then the river flows down the canyon uh, and meets the snake. And then over here, which the pictures we're going to just about to jump back to, is Devil's Canyon. And that's this. So there was, yeah, you, you be the... Yeah, you'll be able to see the scale of this thing. And what's nice about this is two, Highway 263 goes right down through it, so you can, you know, drive leisurely down here and really get the sense of the scale of the thing. So I'm going to stop the share here so we can go back to the yes. back to the imagery. Russ has got some good drone photo, uh, ben footage, has, too. Ben has some drone footage of this canyon, too. Yeah, really... yeah let's see that because this is the only picture. I'm driving the van. Yeah. So I've got this, and then when we stop down here at the um, – He's, yeah, so mention that we're looking up up canyon here. We're looking north. That's right. So, so the water poured over this divide here, this ridge, and then it cut down this canyon. And because the, the, the Palouse got captured, there's no water flowing through there now. So this is uh, this is our buddy Kyle. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wearing an uncharted shirt and a Brothers of the Servant hat. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but you'll oh, notice... Oh, Kyle. Notice that on these tree stumps next to Kyle, you didn't catch this when we were there, but there's there's a little person, <laughs> yes. one of the, the one of the Mitchell. little people there. there see, it is. There it is. <laughs> that's awesome. Got a fairy. Kyle the yeah. little this, well, well, yeah, this is one of the Devil's Canyon fair. This is yeah, this is a little demon here, one, one of the little. Kyle <laughs> should have kicked him. Who is we call this the anti-scale man. <laughs> I was probably still in quarantine watching the show right now. Yeah, bro. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Kyle is still in quarantine. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's insane. Isn't it? <laughs> he, he probably agrees at this point. I bet he would. Yep. Uh, let me get a devil's candy. So we're gonna see. Maybe we ought to go along since Daniel. Kyle's. Since Kyle's still in quarantine, we ought to just go along so he has a little more entertainment. Yeah, you know? there we go. We can't sure. two and, and a half. half two and a half hours of quarantine. There. Okay, uh, oh, we will share. Here we go. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's. Okay. Oh, uh, look at that. Sweet. Yeah, let me uh, actually let me go back one. So I and just get. Oh yes, these those were that are not strand lines. Brad is very insistent that they're not. Terra uh, sits. I don't buy it. Which way? They weren't straight across like strand lines. Did you want me to back up? To... No, 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 this is this is great. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to argue about that on the air. Nope. <laughs> I mean, that's for that's that we that's for the trips, right? Yeah, right. We, we all get to argue. We with, all get to bicker. We listen to Randall's explanation when we're all out of the vans, <laughs> and we all get back in the vans. And we're like, I don't think he knows uh, what he's yeah, talking about. He doesn't know what he's talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get, a, I'll get a kiddie pool and I'll fill it up with olive oil at the next one so we can sell it to uh, wrestling matches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can bring a pallet of olive oil. We, we can survive. We can supply it. We'll wrestle yeah. snake uh, yeah. oil. So, yeah, so, snake oil. So you guys are snake oil salesmen? Yeah. <laughs> it comes with the territory. So this rock right here in the middle, just to the to the right, uh, which would have been on the east side of the highway, would have been a uh, an isolated butte during the during the flood. Hmm. You would see water would have would have flown around that right side there, which would be the eastern side. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. I'm I'm talking about this in the middle Lost of the screen right now. On the right. Yeah, that... there we go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, 
And it's just this is the water has carved it all the way around. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wow. You just imagine how much water filled this canyon. It's yeah, this is this was impressive. And just spectacular too. So uh, work how the far yeah, how far would the water be? Where would the water be at that point? How far above that? Mesa? Well, it, it had to start out by being above the highest point that you see right. flanking on either side. It had to be what if you drew a line along the horizon across the top of this, the water had to start out up at that level. And it was undoubtedly pouring over the entire ridge from here all the way over to Palouse Canyon. And then it found some zones of weakness, which were probably fault lines, and that's why they're so straight. And then once it began to exploit those zones of weakness, it would have quickly downcut. And then the overland flows would have been captured into the canyons. And so that down at the bottom, but, the snake, right? Yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah. To cut that deep, how how deep is the? Is it like four hundred feet? Is it? Uh, That's what it I remember. Varies. Yeah. Yeah, 400 feet on average. That's probably pretty close. Just remember that, guys. Devil's Canyon leads to the snake. <laughs> <laughs> Those in this case. Back to the vans here. Yeah, yeah and there's the there's the rocks that we yep, parked at. Oh, the... that's awesome. Mm, Those are yeah. cool. five trees. That'd be cooler if they were. Five trees. No, <laughs> Joint, are Giant bones, ones. I'm pretty sure. Basalt knobs that were just, you know, left in the, you know, in the wake of the flood. And look at all those people just rudely out in the middle of the road. Road, yeah. <laughs> Cluttering up oh, the place. They, sign the way. they own the place. Cluttering yeah. up the place. <laughs> I think yeah. Only one car went past us and it was a government vehicle. And they were like, are you climbing the rocks? And Dave was like, we're just tourists. <laughs> we're a great answer. Yeah. A non -answer. We're, we're just tourists. <laughs> Dave. He's the right person to answer to. Typical tourist. He's the most trustworthy. Nothing, nothing to see here. Geo nerds, come on. Geo nerds. <laughs> well, this is Blues Falls. And there was this beautiful rainbow. Yeah. Uh, rainbow. Mm. If it was double rainbow, I'd have I would have cried all the way. Yeah. I think I thought you had that in your uh, footage, Ben. In that video you had, it looked like a double yes. rainbow. Yeah, I caught yeah. it from the drone too. I mean, it was from yeah. above. No. Yeah. Ben, did you get did, did catch the drone footage when Kyle did the backflip off the cliff there? I, he was too too swift. I just I was just uh, about to launch it, so I didn't get the. I got a lot of everybody else jumping off. I think, but Kyle was. Well, got, Russ, Russ got it on. He's got the film of it, right? You, you filmed I it on your phone. Footage of him doing. Yeah, that. yeah, uh, yeah, that's solid. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, somebody shared a picture. He was had like a slow mo. He was totally upside down, and somebody shared a picture. Yeah, I thought yeah, he had slow mos started. of a bunch of people. Oh, that's a great that's a shot. Point. Wow. That's, yeah, that's a, that is a great shot. Yeah, that canyon just, the way it's, I, I don't know. It's, it, this, this this was one of my favorite yeah. all yeah. time top favorite sites. It, yeah, um, yeah. And did, I mean, I would have, I could have easily spent, you know, uh, many more hours there hiking all the trails around oh, and, yeah. and everything. Uh, but, you know, as the itinerary, as, you know, we got to keep moving. But, uh, it was it was good. It was good enough to make me want to come back and and yeah, you know, it was like and and check out the huge uh, bar gravel boulder bar on the uh, on the inside of the meander here, and then this wash that got left in the aftermath of the. You got a picture that the flood currents are roaring around this prominence here, um, almost making a hundred and eighty degree turn. And so there's the inside bend, and then down below, just off the screen, would be the outside bend of the meander. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's very typical, except that everything is oversized. So this whole so, flat area down here is just like a huge gravel boulder bar. Yeah, and this is one of the – sorry, I think that's one of the convincing places that tells you that that wash-up gravel is not talus or scree. It hasn't fallen off the – the upper right. levels is actually deposited there because you can see it's only right there yes. and it would have been there because of the, the slowing flow. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a small amount of it left compared to the amount that had to have been taken out of there. It's just like this little pile left. Well, remember we saw two huge uh, bars down at the snake river. Yeah. Flanking the entrance. I mean, yeah. On both, uh, 
to the east and to the west of where the Palouse enters the snake. Right. We were at Lions Ferry State Park down there yeah. waiting in the water for a while when we decided, or I decided, whatever, not going to get the Wallula Gap. Let's hang out here for a while. Now go back to two, two images quick. Okay, so thing to appreciate here is that at the initial stages of the flood, this entire landscape was submerged. And see, it, look, look up on the, yeah, right up there where the where the cursor is. That that is the uh, the streamlined luss. Just in the foreground, you've got scab land. So that was water, probably a couple of hundred feet deep, flowing over over that scab land. You see between the, the edges of the cliff and the, the rolling palouse against the horizon, you've got a little section of scab land in there. Take your cursor back, Ben, to the right, to the right, to the right. Keep going to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. And right in I, there, there. Calls drawing. You can see it in the distance. So, And, and those lush hills are about 200 feet high. So right. you got a picture that initially, as the flood hit this area here and and washed over this this watershed divide it would have been up at the level of the top of this of the lus hills in the distance right. yeah. so this entire scene here would have been submerged and underwater and i mean the scale of this i'm it's when you walk up to this edge here, like we, we, yeah. we come down yeah. the stairs, and I mean this this is going in the background, making this horrendous noise, and it's amazing. And you just walk up to the edge, and this is just it's just breathtaking. Looking off there, we, uh, yeah. You want to show that that drone footage, Russ? Yeah, let's pull it up over here. Uh, let me. I gotta move this. Yeah, sorry. I got it. All right, you guys see this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, let me move it forward. I'm flying down, downstream, down the canyon. The, the falls is behind the drone here. I was trying to get down so I could. Uh... Yeah, and look right up. You're just going out of the screen. Back. Can you back up for one second? Or is that too complicated? Back, yes. back it up. Back it up. Go back a little more, a little more, a little more, yeah. a little more. Okay, right top or top right. You see the scab land up there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that means that you had rushing water up at that level early in the flood stages that was probably at least 200 feet deep. Wow. And then it exploited some weakness in the basalt bedrock and then began to quickly downcut this canyon. Yeah. And the water flows obviously that created this canyon were far, far greater than the modern Palouse River that flows in it. Yeah, I'll skip ahead a bit here. I was just turning the drone around real slow. Obviously, this that, is raw footage. There's the. Those, go ahead, Laura. Yeah, I was gonna say those terraces sort of show the pulsing uh, flow, right? That you were talking about. That it's not well, just all. The the, the 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 yeah, because you've got different multiple layers of basalt here, so you've got a basalt flow that comes in. It it cools and hardens. And then sometime later, you got another basalt flow coming on top of that one. Same thing happens, then you got another basalt flow. So what we're seeing here is multiple basalt flows. And then, of course, when the floods come, those bedding planes that separate the different basalt flows, those are the weakest points. So the water plucking the and eroding the, the bedrock, it, it plucks away and quarries away and leaves the bedding planes exposed, if that makes sense. I like that kind of lunar, weird, castle-like remnant that's just yeah. to the left of the waterfall. There. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. this thing right here is really interesting, and I do get a uh, got a close up of this. Uh, yeah, jump to that next one. Yeah, I'll just you, you flew over it, right? You kind of yeah, right over I flew it. As yeah. close as I could, I you know you know how it and is. You were standing way yeah. behind where the drone is now. Yeah, right this, the, the drone is and out over the middle of the channel here. Um, I was gonna say, was gonna say there's a there's a person up in the top yeah. left there. So if there was a person down by that castle feature, you could hardly make out that it was. There actually are. I a do person. get close. I think there were. Yeah. I do get close. You can hike over there. You can see yep. people here. I'll just skip it forward. There's yeah, some. Yeah, they would. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's the next video where the people are there. But yeah, I, did, I turned it but around. The, this this oh, shot of, of nice. going oh, yeah, across the bend. Yeah. Uh, 
That looks like another wash there above it too. Oh, cool. Yeah, Russ, this is cool stuff. Drone envy. Here, I'll skip uh, this one. There we go. There's some people. Hey. There's people on it. See them? I, tr I was trying to lower the drone deeper down into the end of the wind from the waterfall kept pushing on it. Yeah. And it kept <laughs> complaining at me, so I couldn't really... It kept complaining that there was turbulence. <laughs> so, so I couldn't couple, drop there's, there's people out there, man. Those They're yeah. right on the edge there, damn. Yeah, they're standing right on the edge. There is that trial. Yeah, I saw, I saw the trial in the footage. Oh, that. That'd be a is fun that trial. some of our people? I don't know. No, that probably. guy's right on the edge. Actually, one of them's right on the edge. That's probably one of ours. Probably. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see they're cl climbing your feature here, too. Yeah, it's thin, too. Right? It looks thin. Oh, right. it's really thin. Like a blade. Yeah, wow. Dykish. Just all that's left from, from the... I mean, yeah, there must be just all... Uh, probably wouldn't have taken much longer for that to have been washed away right that's right is that I don't what is that stuck in the side there is that just rock it, there? that's it must be. uh water deposits okay some kind of deposit uh, we saw that at uh pothole scatter act too there was okay. the white deposits i don't know what mineral it is but everywhere and through grand coulee same thing yeah. it's just the edge, edge of the water has the white i guess it's it's all soap lake right same sort of material same water so this must be just strong mineral water, whatever mineral deposit. Minerals, baby. Well done. Minerals. So the mineral good. bath is fantastic. I'll have my drone out next time. It's a Mavic. I think it's the same as yours, except it's an Air. I don't know what that means. Oh, you got the Mavic Air? The Mavic Air 2. Cool, yeah. Cool. Yeah. It was the one they had in stock. It was either that or a Mini, and I didn't want to go to a no, Mini. No, I'll go to the Mini, yeah. So, so this is just, uh, you know, Lions Ferry. Uh, yeah, and also we we found this was the day we decided not to go to Wallula Gap. Everyone's so like crying. hanging out here, and people can drink some beers, and we can stand in the water. And but we did see Sam Squanch come out of the trees. <laughs> That's right. Take the shot. Take the shot. <laughs> this is where uh, a lot of really great conversation took place. Yeah, <laughs> standing in the water, waiting. Hippies. It was Darren yelling at us. <laughs> Brad. Hippies. Yeah. That was perfect. Beautiful uh, blooms. I had to take a lot of pictures of flowers because uh, Laura couldn't come to the trip with us. So That's right. Just send her I flowers. I was sending her flowers <laughs> everywhere we went. <laughs> but yeah, I was. And they were beautiful. It was blooming. There's so many. Yeah, so many great wildflowers. Yeah. So Do there's... you know where this is, Randall? Um... Not a lot of context. Uh, <laughs> this is come on, you can okay. Now this is on top of the moraine. Let's see. Mm. I don't have it. You guys went up on top uh, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Top. Everybody climbed up on top of the moraine. Um what was the name of the place? We have the drone footage of the moraine. Yeah, you you have, have the drone footage of the moraine. Do you have it? I just thought this was a good group. This group. is the one where we drove out there and we stopped and it was we thought there were going to be picnic tables and it was just a gravel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh right, Jameson Lake. That's Moses. Moses yeah, Cooley. Yeah. Moses Cooley, Jameson Lake. That's right. Yeah. You've got. That was my oh, mulligan. On that. Yeah, it. yeah. Your one mul Call, Brad says called it. Mulligan. <laughs> uh, oh well, I've, if you're. No, so, that's West Bar. Did you want me to do it, or do you want me to share that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you want to see that, Randall, the, the footage the of moraine. the moraine? Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, stopped just yeah. south of there. <clears> throat> throat> right. Throat> the drone, let's so do the moraine. Yeah, okay. That was it. it took me a minute to put, put together what you were talking about, but yeah. Okay, the yeah, this is the, this is the co controversial situation where there's a moraine down inside the floodplain, in right? The coulee. Right. In, in the, the coulee. In the coulee, yeah. No, it's, it's behind us, I think. The drone will spin around. Whose drone is this now? Ben's again? This is mine. This is the big one I had. Yeah, I had a couple Phantom. with me. This is the Phantom 3, yeah. So we, I'm flying over to the edge of the coulee. Then it turns around. Let's see. Turning around. Okay, here we go. Panning around. I watched the 50 best drone fails on YouTube a couple of days ago. <laughs> Pretty I, have a, I have a drone fail on this uh, uh, on this trip. It's, it's yeah, yeah, that has a pretty spectacular drone fail. It came back though, didn't it? In the end, oh that that one, it did, that one where I thought I lost it, but no, actually it crashed. It got stuck. Uh, oh, in the trees, it got I heard stuck. I left it at Spokane River. So th is go. this what 
This is what we're talking about, yes, around, right? The, the yeah. hummocky, humpy stuff. That's the moraine. Yeah, so Randall Randall told me that I needed to get drone footage of this. And then when we parked the vans and got out, I found Ben and told him that Randall said that Ben needed to get drone footage of this. <laughs> so, Delegate. I, I, I have footage of it. <laughs> I passed the buck on that one. And then Darren, when we, we were really dragging our feet there, and then finally, finally, Darren showed up right when we were ready to leave. That's right. Where is this? This is where we were waiting for you to show up with lunch, and Jameson you never did. Lake there, yeah. Dude, you could have said we're going to the south end of Jameson Lake. Because <laughs> I yeah. just typed in fucking Jameson Lake. And That's the picture. The it's literally the picture being taken here. Yeah, All right. Yeah, this yeah, right. Up on the moraine and <laughs> picture. I know you guys are probably getting like. And one for the record, I didn't have the lunches. I just had the upgrade line. I had all the good stuff that would make I had good. extra meat and extra cheese so that we could upgrade everyone's sandwiches but you th you think you guys had it bad we were having meat sandwiches we were just taking lunch meat and rolling cheese up in there and just that sounds yeah. great because we just basically had bread <laughs> <laughs> you guys together, would been 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 <laughs> together we would have been unstoppable <laughs> mentioned the word controversial so it's basically the interpretation is is that you had the coulee cut and then after that you had the okanagan lobe uh extending down from the north yeah and it was the okanagan lobe that would have left this um mooring in the coulee and therefore whatever the age of the okanagan lobe moses coulee already had to be there right so then, um, but the thing is, is that the Okanagan lobe had to be there because the, 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 the standard interpretation of Grand Coulee is that the water coming from the east that was discharging from Lake Missoula encountered the Okanagan lobe, and that's what diverted it to the south. Okay, so in other words, that means that Moses Cooley and... Grand Coulee had to be created by two completely independent and separate events. Right. right? If, if that interpretation is correct, if, if in other words, Grand, Moses Cooley was cut before the Okanagan lobe descended down here. But I would suggest an alternative explanation, which is that you just had massive pileups of dead ice choking the upper regions of Moses Cooley at the end of the flood events and massive piles of dead ice, probably a thousand icebergs jammed into this thing and then they melt and drop all their yeah. sediment load. and create this and hummocky what... terrain. And we know that dead ice can create hummocky terrain when it melts. So in yeah. that case, the, 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 it's not like you have the coulee cut and then several thousand years later, the Okanagan lobe has extended into the coulee. It's the coulee is cut and then the ice is deposited in the immediate aftermath of the formation of Moses Coulee. Right. It, it, it is not the, it, what it is, I would argue, is the, it's the remnant massive amounts of dead ice that had been the Okanagan lobe. And you can picture anytime you have that funneling effect, you can picture anytime you have a, a, a narrowing of the channel, no matter what it is that's being carried in there, whether it's icebergs or logs or anything, it's going to jam once it gets in there, see? All right, well, continuing on, this was, uh, for me, this was also really impressive. Um, we we so right here we're starting to descend down into this canyon now. I don't remember what canyon this is. Well, it's still Moses Cooley. It's just lower Cooley. Moses Cooley, yeah. which is physically the, lower. Yeah. So in this one, you had the flat, flat, uh, obviously fertile terrain, and so we drove all the way down through this. And it was. I wish I we had had more pull offs, of course, to take pictures because mm -hmm. it was just incredibly beautiful. But this is entering, um, and then of course they had. 
you know, these vineyards, vineyards. and orchards all down in, but surrounded by these gigantic basalt cliffs. And um, this is I a bit later. Obviously. We're actually kind of coming by, up, up out of it a little bit. But I didn't get very many pictures down inside. But that was a beautiful drive all the way through there. Yeah, incredible, Whoa, incredible sorry, you to have farmland. It, just the view every day when you're getting up, man. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. We thought our vineyard looked cool until we drove down to Moses <laughs> and we we're like, "Oh, <laughs> now that's what it's supposed to look like." Yeah, you guys were just coming in on the walkie-talkies, like, "Wow." Yeah, Kyle and I were back and forth. Oh like, my god! Look at that. <laughs> Love farm. Well, we rushed through there so we could get here to Potholes Coolie. That's right. Yeah. This was this was awesome. Uh, absolutely uh, amazing. This is this has got to be my favorite stop. Also, incredibly dangerously windy, mm -hmm. breezy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody got drone footage of this. Uh, we tr you know, yeah, tried. Mm -hmm. Tried to launch my drone, and it said no. Yeah. You probably had the most powerful drone. It's funny. It's like it's full, it's like full speed forward, and it's going backwards. I'm like, all right, right. probably yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> not really a drone environment. I think it's banked but, forward, and it's just like going backwards. Like, oh, that's, let's that's a beautiful it. picture, though. Yeah, from this vantage mm -hmm. point, wow. the water is coming from behind us. So you can see here that with because this is a panorama, okay, so it's a little bit deceptive, but th this looks like is this where the water's coming from, or is it yes, yeah, okay, yeah, but it's coming from both directions because remember we're there too initially when this starts no, no, no. spilling over, it's probably three to five miles wide, right, and then it begins down cutting the the cataracts. And then water is going to be funneled into those cataracts once they start forming. Why don't we hold that picture right there? Let me jump. Making sure he didn't lose his hat again. Let me jump to the map real quick just to pull up the map of this feature we're looking at here. This will start out with the, with the terrain map. This is the Quincy Basin, named after the town of Quincy, and it was receiving all of the water coming from uh, Grand Coulee and Telford was pouring into Quincy Basin, and it was temporarily stopped or dammed by these two anticlinal ridges moving crossing east to west. So the main discharge of Quincy Basin was here at the Drumheller Channels, but there were three other discharge points. One was Frenchman Cooley, which we didn't get to, but you can actually drive down in French Cooley. The road follows the rock, the great rock blade. But you can see there's two alcoves um, with a rock blade between them. See, and this, this is interesting yeah. how so many of these falls features are two. They're, they're, it's like a yeah. pair with a blade in the middle. That's yeah. that's so. There's something interesting about that. Yeah, and the blade is a, a would be a if. In other words, if the flood kept going for another few days or weeks, the blade would have been gone, and this would have been basically one huge alcove. Or would it continue to make just move the blade further and further back and make new blades as it goes? Because it seems like... I think that, yeah, that depends, I think, on the topography. Okay. But, so, so what we're looking at here is all along here is a ridge, and this it's up to 300 to 400 feet. Like this ridge here is almost 400 feet higher than the sill of Drumheller Channels. So you figure the, the Drumheller Channels, this distance across this eroded segment here from, say, the 262 marker over to the 17 marker, that's nine miles. So you figure that the water was deep enough within Quincy Basin that it spilled over the Babcock Ridge here that forms the western rim of Quincy Basin. So Pothole's Cataract that we were just looking at is this feature here. And again, it has a has a great rock blade here. Um, Pothole's Cataract, you can see why it's called Pothole's. Look at the, the rounding, the round erosional. From This is from intense coking and, um, you know, plunge pools of this water pouring over. So the water is, you can see right here, look, here, here's, a, here's a lesson. The water is pouring over in a sheet, and then what it starts doing is it starts cutting down individual channels, you see. So, again, it's that coming from a sheet flood to a channelized flood, which is it such a like miniature 
finger lakes almost or you know well they do yeah and you can see how like this this lake here which is yeah evergreen reservoir feeds right into this trough here that then becomes the 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 southern alcove and you can see the rounding here again from the from the vorticular intense uh, erosion of this water flowing over so this was potholes and then one more a little farther to the north that's the feature we're looking at right here oh yeah so which one were we actually we're standing we drove right by that we we walk in at the, okay, near the bottom at one lake, and then we yeah. walked yes. across and I, i've got pictures yes. going, looking down the rock blade i've got so, okay so yeah. you'll be able to see right. them the other side okay so i've stopped share there's the man hey darren there look at this bro do you have an emergency or something, Darren? <laughs> Look, oh, nice. What a great what a guy. <laughs> Look, my, my shoes are like glowing. They are, yeah. This is So I have three pictures, and of course they're live. You know, they're live photos. And, and it starts out with you spinning around and yanking your hat off your head because the wind is about to take it. Excellent. We weren't going to let it happen. I'm Darren hat, doing no, a pirouette. He, he was frolicking <laughs> at the yes. edge of the, of the potholes. I'm a frolicker. <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, is, I just have my Cubs upstairs. Ooh, that's a beauty. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, a, yeah, that's oh God, that is nice. basalt here on the right. These yep. are well yeah. defined, and of course it's back there. It's just God. And the, I don't that's know. A rock blade on the left, is it? Yeah, so on rock blade right. on the right. On the right. right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll get over there. So here we are. That's, that's a great. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. So the first pictures were from over there. Way back here. And now we're looking down the rock blade. Again, yeah, that panorama kind of distorts a little bit, so it's yeah, like a little out of line. Yeah, it's you got both, both alcoves. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Nice. There's and there's the potholes Randall was showing us on the. Yeah, and and you can't see it on here, but this whole go back. This whole this is a whole gravel deposit here, and it's mantled with giant current ripples. But you can't over, see them in this. Over to the right there. Over yeah. to the right. Yeah. Yeah, right in there. Yeah. Nope. No, not there. Go back over. Uh, Either way. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right uh, up. Yeah. That whole sandy bit. Yeah, it's got ripples out toward toward his knee. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Towards his knee. Uh, That's right. Right in there. Yep. Yep. I've got more pictures of this. I just I grabbed a few and threw them into the. Uh, but I love this one right here. See, we're all coming back. Yeah. Uh -huh. This has got to be so a Gavin Scavlands promo. I mean, this is awesome. <laughs> Really cool. Everybody, but, yeah, that's a good one. I was trying to get a shot like that, but that one came out really good. I got a good group photo of all you guys up at the top there too. I got a lot of people that want to come on these trips just from that little video I put out yesterday. Yeah, yeah. well, I'll send them over to contact at and they can uh, check out everything. Of course, there's the the next event with Randall there in the Scablands in September, and then we've got our February event in Arizona. Utah event uh, coming up next April, and then of course there's the uh, the fabled Egypt trip that we're still putting together that will be happening uh, November next year. Yep, it's a fun website. Contact at thecabin.com. It's worth checking it's out. I suppose yeah, you can paint this now, Randall. You've been watching so much Bob Ross, yeah, right? Bob yeah. <laughs> 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 you get, these you get, are the mayor's tails yeah. remember yes perfect yep. Yep. coraline eggshell for that color right there in the middle <laughs> yep. so then we're back to dry oh, falls that's awesome wow nice. this is again a panorama um and 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 i think i believe i'm standing out on the end of the little walkway they have a walkway that goes out um like right now. yeah the catwalk there yeah yeah but it was a beautiful day. I mean, look at this. It's raining in some places, but there's, yeah, it's, uh, it was just it's fantastic. Yeah. And then you can barely make it out just above center. There's a little gray area. That's the little parking area where we went uh, down in. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah in a later day. Yeah. Mm. We went down under it. I think it's right. Yeah. Right there. Yep. yep. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's where we all parked and hung out. Yeah, this oh, we just pulled. This is a little pull off on the side of the road, looking down this. Was this the million, million dollar, dollar mile? Million dollar mile. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You Brett, can see Brett, Steamboat uh, Rock right there. Uh, yep, there it is. 
Uh, this is a sundial. Out of order. Yeah, out of order. I don't know how this got out of order. It's up at the dam. Yeah, we were yeah, at the Grand Crown, Crown Point overlook for the Grand Coulee oh, Dam, yeah. Another one out of order. But anyway. Right. Grand yeah, Coulee Day. Grand Coulee Coulee Day. Day. The spaceship we're going to take to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened hey, here. I just, your hand's gone. I, I was like, oh, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> Not only did Fochi but, give me AIDS, he stole my arm. <laughs> it's in the hot, hot tub uh, time machine. Yeah, I need to Photoshop a little blood in there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Contact Ooh. at the cabin. Hey, uh, uh, what is uh, Ooh, what's this? Did we talk about the that? contact at the cabin? Oh, no, no, no. We did. I don't think we got some fun. Whoops. <laughs> Bunch of lunatics. <laughs> I do have a. Let's see if I can pull this up. One more thing to look at with the drone here. One um, more, and then we should probably start wrapping it up. Yeah, yeah, we'll wrap it up after this. But this is. um. Uh, where are we at here? I, I want to see Kyle backflip, man. Oh, we got to yeah, see that, was, yeah. That was, well, was a was applauding him all week for that. Be a documentary. You guys are going to have to wait for that. That was killer. That was so <laughs> There's cool. a slow-mo um, video of it. So I haven't seen it yet. I, 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 Flavor showed me, you know, through the little camera view screen. So. Uh, West Bar. Yeah, yeah, West Bar with the ripples. Yeah. Oh, so man. I was still gaining altitude here. Um, I took the, I basically just, I flew the drone as far up as it would go, straight up. That was I should have done that too. It was great. Yeah, was so I, I got it to half a kilometer above where we were parked, and then I started taking, and then I took a 360 and a bunch of photographs. But um, this was—I don't know—this really impressed me. This Keep was, in mind, we did this all in four days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm getting altitude here. Or a lot. And right, the outlet of Potholes Cooley is just there in the in the upper left there. Yeah. yeah, so you can kind of see the road for scale in there. So you see the houses for scale on those yeah. ripples, and that—that's what I like. That's you that gives yes, yeah, so crescent crescent bar over there. Whole town over here on this bar. Yeah, yep. crescent bar. Whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, so this is a oh, Man, that's nice. temporary city. <laughs> yeah, a tent. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also up here, this is like real. Scab, oh yeah, Scablands scab track right there. Right. Uh, and I'll, here I'll skip through I'll skip through some of this because I do uh, a slow. Babcock bench Randall's talked about several times, and yeah, yeah that that Crescent Bar there was practically nothing there the first year we came out in '98. Oh, okay. It was just a little park. Mm -hmm. Y'all, you know, hardly any of that stuff was built up. Yeah, so I'll skip through some of this. That's um, Trinidad that, there. You can see, yeah, and I like Randall was pointing out these you know these hanging valleys that are in these. Uh, it's really cool. And there's the beginning of the bar here. Hmm. Sweet. Yeah. Scale and variance, Ron. That's yep, yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah. let's see, one more thing here. Great this... job with the drones, guys, man. I love Next that. time you gotta run out there for scale, Brad. One of the, one of the right. steam boats. Well, that... Squirrels, nobody showed up with a squirrel suit. Is that what it's looks that's also a steamboat rock, not the one we climbed up, right? But this is in potholes. Uh, that no. that looks like that's that Dry like, Falls. Dry Falls. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's Umatilla, the rock Umatilla. blade. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of yeah. color, color little, distorted. Yeah, a little washed. I didn't have the camera set right on Look at these gigantic. Um, yeah, exactly. Golly. Those are big as houses, easily. Yeah. yeah. Three and four story houses. Yeah. 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 I think that is. Uh, well, well, anyway. No yeah. worries. It would be great to go back. Okay, and this all is, that, this and is all like, that gravel wash too around the edge, right? So this is a, a, yeah. I mean, you can see the lines right here where this, where the floodwaters were just coming mm -hmm. over this edge. Yeah. That that is such a cool shot. I love. It. I saw this, uh, um, the preview yeah, of that yeah. on my phone. God, uh, yeah. See, that. I just, I wish I would have had the camera settings correct. Uh, I just had it too. I had the aperture too. Destroy falls. Yeah, I have. I have footage of good footage of this from from a couple of years back. Okay, good. Yeah. Those yeah. those striations there up on the. Yeah. upland there those you got a picture as the water is washing over that there are undoubtedly huge icebergs that are probably scraping the bottom as they're oh, man. being washed across yeah all right we should wrap it up 
fantastic trip and uh, we hope everyone will come to september of course well we do have the multi-swap cast here with cosmography and the brothers of the serpent and the grimerica show uh we did want to end with uh oh, just the, uncharted and, and, and ben from uncharted yeah and ben yeah. sorry ben Extreme on Twitch too. So. Um, we just want to sort of get the message out um, once and for all on all the platforms, sort of from the horse's mouth, um, that Sacred Geometry International and Randall Carlson are no longer affiliated. Uh, they haven't been for quite some time. It has been several years since uh, Randall has seen any um, income or anything like that from the website. Uh, the person you see on Twitter tweeting is not Randall. It does not share his opinions. He's not associated with it. And um, basically, it's uh, been a sale of Randall's work for a few years now, which he has not been compensated. Um, so we did want to sort of mention that on this show as well, because we're trying to get that out because people are still buying stuff from from the show and um, or from the website, thinking that Randall's it's going to Randall or supporting Randall's work. The only place to do that is over at randallcarlson.com, um, where you can get to everything. You can get to the contact at the cabin from there, and you know you can get to everything there. So um, that is sort of where we wanted to end of this is sort of make that very clear to everybody. Right, and it, also the Facebook uh, page, SGI, you know, any other social media that's SGI is not post from Randall and never has been. Right. Yeah, it's all the Randall Carlson, or Twitter is Randall W. Carlson. Mm -hmm. so, you want to add say, anything to that, Randall? Oh, someone's mm -hmm. asking in the chat about Geo Cosmic Rex. Oh, that guy. Which is Brad, of course. <laughs> Good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is Brad. <laughs> Can't get rid of him. No, I do, we're not I do all that. Of, that's geocosmic, which is now part of the greater family of, of things that are coming together here in this effort that we're doing. Right. Um, so, so, yeah, if it hasn't come through, if people haven't noticed, SGI has never posted a single thing about the Cosmographia, which is the Randall Carlson podcast. And SGI has never posted a single thing about that. So that's a big clue that uh, there's not an association there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's also never posted anything about Geocosmic Rex. So he's kind of been on his own path for uh, too long. And not for that. years posted, uh, turned the site into a, the social media site into a personal soapbox to promote, promote QAnon, which whether you believed it or not, it was not the place uh, the so sacred geometry international was not the place for for indulging in that and um, and of lately now it's been anti masonry um, ridiculous conspiratorial nonsense about freemasonry that's so absurd that it's almost laughable uh, but the irony there is is that many Freemasons have supported that site, have purchased the classes, have purchased the compasses and the things that are there, and have promoted that site. And also the fact that there would not be sacred geometry as we know it today if the Freemasons had not preserved it for us. So it seems rather ironic that now he's posting um, things, but it's maybe perhaps not ironic given the fact that I'm been a Freemason and I hold the craft in very high esteem um, to uh, post things saying that Freemasonry is a kind of sat satanic conspiracy or whatever is probably a way of getting a dig at me, um, maybe. But in either case, it, it's ridiculous and it has no place there um, because uh, Freemasonry is a noble institution that has preserved uh, a great deal of, of very important knowledge and wisdom and to see it dragged down into the mud with these ridiculous conspiracy theories is really disturbing and disappointing to me. And the fact that he's using the social media now as a forum for posting that kind of garbage is to me just an insult. So again, what, what Darren said, I received no money from the sales of that, uh, any of the content that I provided and created for that website and it's disappointing to me that it started out good but somewhere along the line uh there just became too much drama and at some point we will go into great detail on that but everybody here has seen 
um, and had some experience with um, the administrator of that site. Um, and, and we and we joke about uh, you know satanic worship and all these devil sites that are around everywhere, but you know the, there's a there's factions that would look at, at at anybody who studies the cycles of the moon or looks at the astrological constellations. Well, those, those are devil worshippers. So you know we just kind of joke about that because yeah, we're 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 interested in what's what's happening with the moon and on the moon and potentially in the moon. Hail Satan. Well, and <laughs> as somebody who <laughs> studied deeply into symbolism, all of that, you know, to me is is just to to take it and make it like it's literal. You don't. They don't understand that all of that is all of the the Satan, the devil, Lucifer. They're not the same thing. They're all nuanced symbols, and that's what they are. They're symbols for talking about natural forces. Um, and to cast it like there's some literal meaning to it is is ridiculous. It's infantile. And now to cast Freemasonry as if it's some kind of a satanic conspiracy is truly really ridiculous. And um, anybody who would post such a thing, I would think, has immediately forfeited their right to host a website that is dedicated to sacred geometry, which is the legacy of the, the craft. Well said. Well, well said. gentlemen, I thank you all for a fantastic trip last week, a life-changing event, as uh, mentioned by several attendees. Yes, indeed. I look thank you, Darren. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks My so pleasure. We edited that thing and and uh, and and got it all. Got the place and I don't know. You just uh, yeah. You don't Made stop. It awesome. Maker of magic. Dealer. Maker of magic, right there, brother. It's going to be fantastic. And I thank everyone for listening. And I thank you guys for joining me tonight for this wrap up show. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, everybody. All right. Great love, to see you guys. And I thank can't you. wait. Can't wait to do it again. Yes. If you have questions, ask Laura on social media. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Com. I know everything. Love to see it. <laughs> awesome fun for days in a row. All right, guys. All right. Bye, Good guys. night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Good night. See you next week. Love you. Always have. Love you guys. Yes. Ciao. Okay, I gotta go get to my kids. Okay. I'll catch thanks, up with you guys soon. Yeah, thanks, Darren. Winner.